The question has another part during which it says that another boy reaches out of the building at 3 meters above the initial position of the ball and attempts to catch the ball. At what time will the ball pass him? So this boy is actually standing next to a building. There we have a building. A boy throwing a ball up in the air. Okay. And there's another boy peeking out trying to catch the ball. At what time will the ball pass him? Now there's one thing that obviously you know that when you throw a ball up in the air it comes back down. So there are going to be two times associated to this question. One time when it reaches the boy when it goes up and then when it comes down again that will be at a different time. So the boy can choose either he can catch it while it's going up or while it's going down. That means there's going to be two times associated with this and that gives me already a clue as to what formula to use. Obviously the formula where T can have two answers and that is this quadratic formula. Okay, but nevertheless let's use all of the information that was given to us. It tells us that this boy is at three meters above the position where the ball was launched. So we have change in displacement must be three meters. We have that the initial velocity of the ball is equal to eight meters per second. And we also know that acceleration is a constant negative 9,8 meters per second squared. Do we know the future velocity? In other words, do we know the velocity that the ball has when the boy catches it? No, we don't. We know the maximum height velocity is zero, but unfortunately the velocity when the boil wind wants to catch it, that upwards or downwards velocity is still unknown to us, but it's not necessary because we see we have initial acceleration, delta x and time, which is all we need to be able to use this form formula. Delta x, initial um, time calculating and acceleration. So with that in mind let's substitute, well let's start writing down our formula that change in time is equal to, sorry, delta x is equal to initial velocity times delta time plus a half a delta t and substitute what we know. We know that delta x is 3 meters above the ground. Initial velocity is 8 delta t plus and here we go a half times a gives me a half times nine comma eight. Oh, don't forget that's negative they did tell us right in the beginning that upwards is positive that means acceleration is negative 9.8 because it's downwards delta t squared I forgot my square in my formula I remembered at least. Okay, now I need to solve it. You'll recall again I need to put it in the formula ax squared plus bx plus c in that format so that I can use my x is equal to negative b plus minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. So to do that I always have the same method. I just take everything to the left hand side because this is usually negative because I chose downwards as negative. If I chose um, upwards as negative or downwards as positive, I would take everything to the right hand side because then this term would have been positive. But it really doesn't matter much. Okay. But when I do that, I find that a half times uh, 9.8 gives me 4,9 delta t squared. 8 becomes negative 8 delta t and the 3 is still positive at that side. It's equal to 0. Now I see the delta t is therefore equal to and all I need to do is substitute into this formula of mine. Negative b means negative 8 times negative 1 gives me positive 8. Plus minus square root of b squared means negative 8 is squared. Make sure that the negative is also squared. Minus 4 times 4.9 times 3. 
because this is A, that is B, and that is C. Times 2 times A is 2 times 4.9, which just gives me the 9.8 again. So this is just 9,8 again. Cool. Now all I do is use my calculator to solve that. Okay. Again, I first do the square root, starting with the interior of 8 negative, that is squared. Obviously, this um, negative becomes positive and it's 64. Minus 4 times 4.9 times 3 is equal to 5.2. That is the interior of the square root. If I take the square root of that, I get 2.28 and that I'm going to put into my memory by clicking memory store. Once it's in my memory, I can clear my screen. Be careful not to clear your memory. And I can go ahead by taking 8 plus that answer I just got and 8 minus that answer I just got. So delta T is going to be equal to 8 plus memory recall equals 10 point that. That's for the top part divided by 9.8 gives me 1.049. So that will be 1 comma zero five seconds okay and then the next t is going to be when i subtract so i'm going to say eight minus memory recall gives me 5.7 divided by 9.8 is equal to 0 comma 58 0 comma 58 seconds now to make sense of this all, what does that mean? Well, the ball goes up in the air, reaches the top, and comes back down. Okay, There's a boy standing at 3 meters, leaning out of a window, and he wants to catch that ball. When the ball goes up, the first time, that's 0 0.58 seconds. So it takes 0 0.58 seconds for the ball to reach the position where the boy is at then it goes up in the air and a few more seconds passed or milliseconds passed actually and after 1.05 seconds it is coming back down and it's again at the position where the boy can catch it and it's at this point or at the first point that the boy can decide to catch it 